syphilis is a sexually transmitted infection and the group of people most at risk of developing syphilis are men who have sex with men. Occasionally syphilis can be transmitted through the placenta to the fetus and this is known as congenital syphilis. The organism causing syphilis is a spirochete called Treponema pallidum. And spirochetes are spiral motile bacteria. And one way syphilis can be diagnosed is by seeing the spirochetes using dark field microscopy. Other laboratory tests for syphilis include rapid plasma reagent or RPR, venereal disease research laboratory test, that's VDRL, treponema pallidum particle agglutination assay or TPPA, or fluorescent treponemal antibody absorption test, that is FDA ABS. Treatment for syphilis is with antibiotics, particularly penicillin. And if syphilis is not diagnosed early and promptly treated, it can have serious consequences over a number of years. One of the problems with syphilis is that it can be a little tricky to diagnose because the infection has a number of distinctive stages. And here is a simple timeline of syphilis infection if untreated. So after infection, primary syphilis develops within usually about three weeks, but anything between two and 12 weeks. And one to six months after primary syphilis, secondary syphilis may develop. And then this is characteristically followed by a latent period of up to 20 years. And then tertiary syphilis may develop. Primary syphilis manifests itself as a chancre with enlarged lymph nodes and the chancre is a painless red lesion that typically occurs on the penis, vagina, vulva, cervix or anus. And this lesion contains spirochetes that can then spread through the body via the blood and lymphatics. And the chancres tend to heal in three to six weeks. If the primary syphilis is not treated, this can be followed by secondary syphilis and symptoms of this include lesions on the soles of the feet, palms of the hands, anogenital areas and the axillae. There may be fever, lymphadenopathy, a rash and loss of hair or alopecia. Erosions may occur in the mouth and the pharynx and the external genitalia and these contain spirochetes and are infectious and the symptoms of secondary syphilis can last for several weeks. And here is an example of a skin biopsy containing a heavy infiltrate of lymphocytes and plasma cells in secondary syphilis. Tertiary syphilis is the final stage of syphilis and it is rare if there has been appropriate treatment for syphilis. However, a third of people with syphilis that has not been treated can be expected to progress to tertiary syphilis. And this can include neurosyphilis, where the syphilis affects the brain and meninges and the spinal cord. Tertiary syphilis can cause inflammation of the aorta, particularly the ascending aorta. This can result in an aneurysm forming. And the other manifestation of tertiary syphilis is the presence of gummers. And these are tumour-like granulomatous lesions that can occur all over the place, including the skin, bones, brain, liver, testes and heart. And finally, here is an example of syphilitic aortitis, where the ascending aorta has become inflamed and dilated. Yeah.